Thank you very much indeed, and I join everyone. Special welcome, and I also, also acknowledge that we meet on Ghana land and we pay respect to elders past and present. I'd like to acknowledge the Honourable Kaya Ma, MLC, Minister for Employment, Minister for Aboriginal Affairs and Reconciliation, Minister for Manufacturing and Innovation, Minister for Automotive Transformation, Minister for Science and Information Economy. I must say, every time I have a busy day, I think about the Minister's diverse responsibilities and I think, I have no right to complain. With a portfolio like that, well done, Minister. Fellow Adelaide City Council elected members, Councillor Phil Martin, Councillor Sue Clearahan, Mark Goldstone, our CEO. Our panel members today, ladies and gentlemen, Nick Mitsevich, David Homburg, Sandy Pitcher, and Chris Bartlett. And uh, Nick, thank you for a wonderful event at the Art Gallery for the Adelaide Fashion Festival uh, last week. It was terrific. Hamilton Calder, CEO and North, uh, Director of uh, South Australia and Northern Territory for CEDAR, and thank you very much to the CEDAR team for your very kind hospitality for ho hosting this event today. And Nigel McBride, of course, um, our fearless leader of Business SA, and what an important role that Business SA has in today's economy in terms of assisting with the transformation of not only the City of Adelaide, but South Australia. I'd like to welcome our directors, Adelaide City Council Directors Beth Davidson-Park, Claire Mockler, Steve Mathewson and Justin Commons. And a special welcome to everyone. So thank you everyone for giving up some of your valuable time today to listen to our plans for your city. A race to the future, and that it is. Time is off the essence. There is no doubt about it. Things are changing faster, sometimes faster than what we are all comfortable with, but we know for sure that change is upon us. So this is all about determining what does Adelaide look like? What does it look like in 2016? What does it look like in 2020? And what do we need to do together to get there? Cities, as we know, account for some 80% of the GDP of Australia. Cities, we know, account for 80% of the population of Australia. Cities, we know, account for approximately 80% of the carbon output of Australia. And this is this recurring theme of what I would best describe as the 80-20 rule when it comes to city. There's increased urbanisation happening not only in Australia, but of course, all around the world. The city of Adelaide accounts for 20% of South Australia's gross state product. $18.25 billion per annum, and it's growing. And it's growing because the knowledge-intensive industries are very city-centric. Technology, education, professional services, medicine, tourism, these are the sectors which we're showing growth. And only recently we showed some 14% growth in knowledge economy jobs in the city over the last couple of years. So what type of city do we want? What type of city do you want? How do you share in that story? That's what this strategic plan is indeed all about. We know some of the great accolades, as Nigel shared with us earlier, in terms of the city in South Australia, fifth most livable city in the world, as voted by The Economist. Now in the top 10, number five of most visited regions or regions to visit in 2017, by Lonely Planet. These are extraordinary accolades on the world stage. And our opportunity now is what do we do with that? How do we leverage off that? We want to be a city where we live in the moment and we plan for the future. And as I said, time is of the essence. Council, when it first formed in 2014, almost immediately, and full credit and thanks to my fellow elected members and our leadership at Town Hall, we set about immediately in building a strategic plan, a plan which we could unify around, a plan which you could unify around. And we did first a great deal of work in terms of consultation with a diverse range of stakeholders right across our city, private, government and community, to listen to what you wanted about your city and how we could articulate that into a plan. We wanted a plan also that plays to our strengths. And we rallied around a four-point plan about being a smart, green, livable and creative city. 
And we know that those four are equally important to the City of Adelaide. We know that each of those four represent our past, our present, and definitely our future. And we also know that we wanted a plan which was incredibly outcome oriented. We wanted a plan which we could measure. I have Michael Bloomberg's words in my ears. I heard him speak. I was with the Premier in uh, Paris at the COP21 Climate Summit in December last year, and he said, you can't measure what you don't manage. You can't manage what you don't measure. Let me get that right, Martin. <laughs> you have to be able to measure it. Otherwise, you can't manage it. And that recurring thought has come back to me time and time again. And we've built a strategic plan over the next four years which has 110 separate actions in it, all of which are measurable. And they all sit under being a smart, green, livable and creative city. And this is all about making an Adelaide an even more livable place to be. This is all about making Adelaide a city which nationally is competitive. And this is also about making Adelaide a city which is internationally competitive. Because in today's globalised economy, today's globalised world, you need to have all three. You have to be livable. You have to have a wonderful level of amenity for us to all enjoy. You have to be nationally competitive. You have to be internationally competitive. So this plan, we suggest, has helped identify and uncover those key drivers of how we are going to deliver just that. When we talk about a city which is a smart city, we know that's a city that welcomes education, learning, innovation and technology. And the Minister spoke at length about the role of what we would describe as 21st century infrastructure, as in our ability to move data fast. It is defining. We talk about our basic infrastructure across our city, which is our roads, our bridges, our parks, all extremely important to make a livable city. But when we talk about data, we're now talking about infrastructure which makes us a competitive city. And we welcome the, the rollout of MBN. We welcome the state government's partnership with regards to One Gig City. We think it's an inspired move. And we're concurrently working on a project which could deliver 10 gigabit speed, cloud-based aggregation and distribution, to every commercial premises in the city should they want it. And you'll hear more about this in 2017. So look at data as, and the ability to move it fast, as 21st century infrastructure. Livability. We want a city where more people want to live. We want a city where more people want to visit. We are seeing currently greater and stronger demand for people to live in the city more than what we have for decades. Approaching 1,000 new residents every year. $2.5 billion worth of residential construction in the pipeline, accounting for about 2,750 apartments and townhouses. More people want to live in the city. And they identify with the lifestyle. And full credit, ladies and gentlemen, to previous terms of council who invested heavily into the vibrancy of the city in partnership with the State Government of South Australia. We had to get vibrancy moving. We had to. And liquor licensing review and a whole range of things took a quantum leap toward getting us there. We have to protect that, we have to nurture that, we have to grow that, we have to accelerate that. This is exactly what Nigel's talking about. But now we've got to add the smart infrastructure around it to make sure that vibrancy is matched equally by economic development. And then we have a city which we believe is truly sustainable. A great city to live, a great city to get a job. And that's what we hope this plan does. There's certainly a duality about a capital city council. My fellow elected members would experience this every single day. We are local government, but we're the capital city council. 220,000 people a day visit the city of Adelaide, of which only 25,000 would vote for me or my fellow elected members to put us into office. So we're always mindful about that duality of our role. We're building a city for all South Australians, but we're responding to the needs of our local community. And the cold hard reality is we must do both. 
It's incumbent upon us to build a city that is all, for all South Australians, for all Australians who visit our city and those from overseas who come to our city. We must deliver that as a city council and we must often do it through partnerships. And that's why our partnerships with private industry and with the state government are so fundamental to enabling us to help you to build a more sustainable city. A green city, absolutely critical. And our panel members will really debunk this today. Each of our four panel members represent each of those four disciplines of smart, green, livable and creative. But a green city, world's first carbon neutral city. We encourage everyone here to look at that through the lens of differentiation, competitive advantage, something Adelaide can truly own on the world stage. There were 40,000 people at the Paris COP21 in December and they're all talking about sustainability. Just imagine if Adelaide was able to secure the mantle of being the world's first carbon neutral city. People would flock here. Investment would be attracted to here. Knowledge jobs would proliferate here. Our universities would thrive. Our conferencing sector would boom. Ethical investment would be the centre of the world. It is truly transformational. And whether you're a climate sceptic, whether you're a climate agnostic, or whether you're a pro-climate, look at it through the benefits, the transformational benefits for you and for your city. We think it's profound. So does the government. And again, our partnership, in this instance with Minister Ian Hunter, is profound. This stuff does not happen globally. These partnerships don't happen globally. The Premier and I and the Minister certainly learnt that in Paris. So let's grab it. Let's seize the moment. I think it's that important to the city. So is local infrastructure. Through the partnerships, we're delivering better laneways, extended, extended tram networks, improved cycling infrastructure, greater livability, and a more beautiful, timeless city, whereby our city streets are places which we are truly proud because they look fantastic and they have a timeless beauty about them. Because we think also that that talks to the livability of the city and residential attraction, not just its functionality. So we've got to get the design right. And we're looking inwardly on all of these projects we're doing right now to make sure we get the design right. It's absolutely fundamental. We want a city that welcomes mixed-use transport. We want a city whereby if you'd like to get public transport, it's a great experience for you to use. We want a city whereby if you want to ride your bike into town, it's a safe experience for you to enjoy. We want a city whereby if you want to drive your car, it's a pleasurable experience for you to do so, do so also. But we really want a city for people. We want a city where it's a pleasure to walk around, to experience, to live in, to explore the laneways, to visit a wine bar, to go to a theatre show, to go to the Art Gallery of South Australia. Wherever you're going, we want that to be the ultimate experience. So, so much about this plan talks to the city experience. And our KPI, for want of a bit of a word, when it comes to the success of this plan by 2020, is how many of you, how many of your friends, how many of your families visit the city and use it? If the city's growing, we're doing something right. And that's how we look at it. If more people get to benefit from our great city, our strategic plan is making some good sense. Technology is so multifaceted. We want a city which welcomes electric vehicles. Only this week, we've announced that we're laying out 40 electric vehicle charging stations across our city streets. We want to send a clear policy signal that this is the future. And we're investing into that infrastructure right now. We also announced that we're laying out smart parking technologies to make it easier for people to find an on-street car park to save time, to reduce carbon emissions, to, to lower frustration and put the power of choice back into the hands of the city user so that we can reduce ultimately city expiations. So we want to lead. We must, as a city, lead. It's incumbent on all of us. Our size 
in 2016 has all of a sudden become our competitive strength. A city of 1.3 million has critical mass, but we're small enough to be agile, quick, welcome new ideas, adopt technology fast, roll out new infrastructure, and really lead Australia. And we hope that this strategic plan is actually not only a plan for people, but it's also very much a plan for the future, but it's a plan of leadership. We're rolling out smart lighting technologies. We're looking at our own internal customer service focus at Adelaide City Council. How do we, in every instance, using technology to help us, deliver better services to you, to our community, to those that use the city? In closing, we are also great believers that as we charge ahead into this brave new world with a plan, with measurable actions which will help us deliver it by 2020, we can't also forget where we've been. And that's why we are so strong about our heritage protection. Because we think that talks a lot to our self-identity as a city. As we move into a new future, sometimes chartered, sometimes uncharted waters, you've got the reliability of knowing that that heritage will be there. So our beautiful North Terrace, our beautiful city buildings, many of our stunning residential homes, we think are something to be protected. But they can coexist with great quality contemporary development. And we genuinely believe that we can have both. Ladies and gentlemen, I hope that you find this plan to be decisive, bold, and I hope you find us to be determined. And we thank you for your partnerships, and we thank the State Government for the partnerships. Thank you.